And the new series is where God cannot do does not exist. I was listening to one of the African preachers on um, YouTube and, and, and this ministry. They just see all kinds of signs, wonders, and miracles. And that phrase just kept ringing into my spirit. And they kept saying, what God cannot do, don't exist. What God cannot do, don't exist. So when somebody tell you, oh, we ain't got a job for you. Oh, your credit can't, hey, your credit can't open up a door for you. Oh, no, we can't use you because we ain't got no room for you. When man tell you something that they can do, you got to understand that your God can do it. Say, my God can do it. This is the season that you got to understand that our God is online. That you got to understand that there's a war going on in the earth. And that you got to understand that the same, the prince of the air, he want to tell us what we can't have. He want to tell us what we can't do. He want to tell us what we can't afford. He want to tell us don't nobody love us. Don't nobody want to be with us. He want to tell us that we sin. He want to tell us that we defeated. And he, that's why he called the God of this world. But you got to understand that your God said what the devil said we can't do. My God said we can do. And this is where you got to brag on your daddy. You got to brag on your daddy when the lady was like a three or four years old. We had some furniture being delivered in the house. And they couldn't get the furniture in through the door. And the man uh, 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 from back out, he began to say, we got to take the hinges out the door. And when they began to bring, take the hinges out the door, she said, oh, she was looking at the girl. Oh, and, I, and the man looked and they stopped. She said, I'm going to tell my daddy, you going to tore the door off our house and my daddy going to get you. I said, girl, shut up. <laughs> she said, you going to cut the door off. She was bragging on her daddy. Because she saw, she thought they were doing something that they had no business doing. That's what you got to tell the devil. Oh, you don't try to make me sick. Oh, you don't came up against my finances. Oh, you trying to tell me that I ain't gonna make it. I'm gonna tell my daddy on you. This is where you got to open up your mouth and you got to brag on your daddy and you got to say what you say I can't have, I can't have. What you say I can't afford. And you gotta understand that your words, your words are being tried. Say my words are being tried. You gotta understand God, every time God calls us to do something, it's gonna always look like you're defeated. It's gonna always look like it can't happen. But God is saying by you being my child, my children believe that I can do it. Even when you know one plus one equal two, but if your daddy said, I'm going to take these two fish and these five loaves of bread, and he said it's going to be 5,000, you better say it's 5,000. Because you and I both know in the natural, two fish and five loaves of bread can't feed no 5,000. But if that's what my daddy said, that's what we can do. So you got to say, with this check, it say according to the word and according to the natural realm, see, you got to break covenant with the natural laws. The natural law said that I got to have the same amount of money to pay these bills. It may look like I ain't got enough money, Angie, but my God said he will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And so you got to say, you the liar. I'm going to tell my daddy that my daddy said he's going to supply all my needs. Not some of them, but all my needs are being supplied according to his riches and glory. And you got to keep saying it because his words is going to be tried the situation that you see. You got to understand the situation that you see. Say it talk to you. Come on, dude. Why you got heard that song say, I told that song you got to behave? You don't think that talk to you? You don't think whatever talk to you? Baby, whatever talk to you, it'll wake you up, you won't be able to sleep. Come on here. You don't think pain won't talk to you? Pain will wake you up out of your sleep. And it'll talk to you and tell you that you ain't gonna make it. Let you have a toothache. You will have that pain to wake you up and you'll have, you will love food and won't be able to eat. Come on here. You gotta understand situations will talk to you and you gotta start back talking to the situation. This is where we got to repent and say, God, forgive me because I ain't been talking back to the situation. I've been listening to what the devil told me, but I haven't been telling the devil about my God. See, because if you're gonna see the impossible, if you're gonna see the impossible made possible, you're gonna have to talk. And so, what we're gonna talk about today is entering a spiritual place. Say, I gotta enter into a spiritual place. 
What is the focus? The focus is you got to learn to activate your faith by putting the demand on the God of the possible to manifest for you. Do you not know that your God want to show up for you? Do you not know God loves you so much that he want to show up just for you? Because he healed people's out. See, the God has brought down Jehovah Elroy. Elroy. E-L Roy. R-O-I. That's the God who sees. Whenever you say, God, I know you see me. Jehovah Elroy, I need you to see that I'm going through. Jehovah Elroy, I need you to see that I've been faithful. Jehovah Elroy, I need you to see that I've been fasting. Jehovah Elroy, I need you to see that I've been confessing your word. I need you to see what I've been going through. I need you to see what they're saying about me. I need you to see what I am doing. You got to call on your God so he can manifest for you. See, you got to understand when you are entering into a spiritual place, what is the spirit? The spiritual realm, first let me tell you what a, de a definition for a realm. Realm is an unseen, invisible community or territory which is ruled by another. It's an invisible or unseen community or territory which is ruled by another. And so we're talking about being ruled by God. So when you open up your mouth, you enter into the spiritual realm. Hear me. Even though I'm right here in this building, but when I start speaking God's word, and my mind starts focusing on what I'm saying, I'm believing what I'm saying, I have left the earth realm and I have entered into another dimension. Dimension is another world. So right before you, I am in another world. I'm not focusing on the people in the church building. I'm not focused on what it looked like. I have entered into another place in the realm of the spirit. How? Because my God is a spirit. And so I activate him by when I speak. How did you get saved? Romans 10 and 9 say you confess with your mouth, right? You believe in your heart, right? Then Jesus come in and saves you. So if you get saved by speaking and by believing, guess what? You enter into the spiritual realm by believing and speaking. And this is where you don't allow what you see with the natural realm interrupt with what God has spoken. I'm going to say that again. This is where you don't allow distractions. You don't allow the plots and plans of the enemy. You don't allow what he said, what she said. You don't allow what the bill collector said, what the lawyer said, what the doctor said, what your husband said, what your wife said, what your children said. You don't allow what they said to interrupt you. Because when you're entering into the spiritual realm, write this down. The spiritual realm, it hears my words. The spiritual realm, it listens to my words. When I speak in the spiritual realm, angels come. When I speak the word of God, angels start taking off and they start doing what I'm speaking. But also, let me give you a disclaimer. When you say negative things, guess what? Demons respond in the spiritual realm. That's why it's a war going on right in front of you and you don't even know it. Because sometimes when we're looking at a situation, it looks bad. The reason why it looks bad, because the devil is wanting you to agree with what he's showing you about your situation. So the doctor may gave me a diagnosis. It looked like that, you know what, my finances is out of way. It looked like that my marriage is out of way. It looked like my child is gone astray. It looks like everything in my life is messed up. And the enemy wants me to agree with what I see. Because when I agree with what I see, Angie, I have now stopped being a child of God and now I have become a child of the devil. That's what happens. See, that's why the devil don't want us to know the word. Because when you start agreeing, you start worrying, you start stressing, you have now violated the kingdom of God. Because when you are a child of the king, Jesus comes in us and he said he wants you to he wants to build us where we look like him. We talk like him. We act like him. And you gotta understand, Satan is the God of this world and he wants to put limitations on you. 
He want to put restriction on you. He want to say you ain't going to make nothing but $15,000 a year. He want to put restriction on you that you're going to stay in an apartment for all your life. Everybody in the family never owned nothing. They never owned the house. They never rented. They always rented. He want to put them restrictions on you. He want to say your children are going to always be in the street. Everybody in your family. Everybody sell drugs. They drunk. They alcoholics. They never make nothing of their life. That's the job of the enemy because he want to restrict you to what you see. That's why he don't want you in the right church. Because when you're in the right church and when you connect to an apostle, an apostle is going to bring all of in your life. That apostle is going to put a demand on your mindset. That apostle is going to put a demand on the way that you're thinking. And God going to use that apostle to shift your thinking. Say, shift my thinking, God. Shift my thinking. See, because when you are in a regular church and you got a regular church mindset, oh, the pastor going to do it. Oh, the pastor is the only one anointed. The pastor is the only one can pray. The pastor the pastor, the devil is a liar. God ain't never told the pastor to be the only one. God has said, I'm raising up an apostolic people, and they're going to be a washer and know how to cast out the devil. He said, they're going to know how to walk in the kitchen, and they know how to lay hands on the sick, and they're going to recover. you got to understand in an apostolic house, that's where God will use everybody. Use your side, you're going to be able to prophesy word to heal baby. See, this is why we got to understand, yes, you will do it. And get him. You heard what I said. This is where the enemy want to try to tell you that you got to agree with what you see. And see, in this way, you got to understand, you got to make a declaration out of your mouth and tell Satan, you ain't my God no more. You got to begin to open up your mouth because I tell you, when you get in the spiritual realm, you got to oh, you got to agree. You got to put something in the atmosphere. And you got to keep putting it into the atmosphere until you see it change. Yeah. Do you hear me? So this ain't for the lazy folks. This ain't for the folks that I'm pitiful. Oh, Pastor, I ain't like you. God ain't told you to be like me. He told you to be like you. He told you to open up your mouth and keep coming to me in prayer. He told you to open up your mouth and keep speaking my word. See, that's the problem. We have God lazy and regular church have not taught us. So you got to understand that I'm in the kingdom of God. See, when you start learning how to live in the spiritual realm, you disconnect from the kingdom of darkness and you enter into the spirit, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God. See, you got to understand when Jesus is your God, when you're in the kingdom of God, not only do God want to rule in the in the spirit realm, but he want to rule in the natural. What am I saying? Keep in my quavers and keep in. Jay, let me show you this is what's going on. It looks like, when you look at me, it looks like I'm just a human being. So, okay. You come over here. And you come over here. We got to understand that when you're on earth, you just see me. Red represents, he represents the devil. He represents right here the kingdom of God. And so when I go into a situation, when I agree with what I see, you got to understand two kingdoms is fighting. Even though you're looking at me, let's say my situation say that I'm sick right here. When I look at the situation, and I said that I'm sick, and the doctor said they don't gave me 30 days to live, and ain't nothing going to help me. I now look at it through the kingdom of darkness eyes. I'm doomed, I'm gloomed, ain't nothing working out for me. And they say that I'm going to die, so I'm going to call my children, I'm going to call everybody, I'm going to get my policies in order. Because I'm looking at things from the perspective of what I see and what the doctor has said. And that's why we have to repent because we have came into agreement with what we see. And see, I got on glasses because the glasses represent I'm seeing through the perceptive of what the devil has said to me. But when I'm a child of God, even though the devil said all this about me, but when I get in the word, he said, by his stripes, I am healed. Even though I feel pain in my body, even though I'm going through all this stuff, but then now I got to get on the internet and I got to see what do I need to do? Do I need to lose weight? Do I need to change my diet? 
What do I need to fast? Do I need to pray? I need to start quoting scripture. And I said, by his stripes, I heal. Even though I feel the pain, it's going to take a lot out of me because I understand I'm feeling what I'm feeling in the natural. But I understand that I'm a spiritual being. And so by me being a spiritual being, then with my angel head. So now I have to step on in into the spiritual place. And in the spiritual place, now I got to say, by his stripes, I'm healed. Even though I'm still in this place in the natural, and I've got to begin to say, you know what? I don't care what it looks like. I should live and not die. Regardless of what the doctors say, I'll break them words off of me because I'm going to make it. Regardless of what it seems like, God, I thank you for healing me. I thank you that my body is whole. I thank you that the sickness is gone. Every day, God, I thank you right now, oh God. I may not feel good in my flesh, but you told me, oh God, by your strength, I am healed. I thank you that I don't have no pain in my body. There's no pain in my body. Oh God, Every day I say, I'm saying this, I feel pain. But God, I thank you that the pain is gone. God, the pain is gone. I thank you right now, God, that you're gone over pain. And that pain got to obey you. God, I thank you right now. And so every day, I got to grab a hold of the word of God. You see, I got a hold of it. And I got to. Now, I want you to kind of like pull me a little bit. I'm holding that because we ain't gonna wrestle. <laughs> so, tell her how he's pulling me, but I gotta hold on to what God said. God, I know you said in your word that by your strength I'm healed. See, it ain't stopping the devil from pulling at me, but I gotta say, God, I'm gonna hold on to your word. I'm gonna hold on to your promise. Oh, God, see, I gotta come out these shoes because see my word now. See, you gotta know the vote. God, I thank you. I gotta hold on to you, God. I ain't I need you to fight for me tonight. Come on, here. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Can't let see how he pulling me that way, but my angel got to fight. But it causing me to stand in a place of prayer, and I got to believe what my angel is doing. See, my angel is pulling me. So when I get tired, come on, I'm gonna get tired, angel. I need you to pull me, pull me, angel. Your angel to come on and pull in when you weak at. Right, right, right. Cause see, I have entered into a spiritual place. What brought me into that place? My words. Thank y'all. So this is why we got to understand that the enemy want to get you at a place to be locked in by what you see. Right. And you got to understand when you are in the spirit, that means your soul and your thinking got to change. And you can't go by what it looks like in the natural. Turn your Bibles to Matthew 19. So when you look at Matthew 19, so you got to understand, even though I'm going to remind y'all, even though we're in the natural, but we fight two wars. We fight a natural war, and we fight a spiritual war. Right? So don't just think what you see is what you see. What you see because you fight spiritually and you fight naturally. How do you know that you fight a spiritual battle? Because here, I'm up here fighting, and I go to the doctor, and let's say, please, I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, but I can't find nothing wrong with you. I know for real I gotta get in that spirit realm. I better start speaking the word. I better start saying that I should live and not die. Because that means somebody else has been speaking for my life to shift to another place. And so now my words gotta fight with the words that somebody else has spoken about me. Right? So let's look at Matthew 19. When you look at Matthew 19, let's look at verse 23. When you look at verse 23, this is when it says here, and Jesus said to his disciples, this is when Jesus talked to his disciples, and he said, truly I say to you, it will be difficult for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. I want you to underline that word kingdom. I told you, whenever you see that word kingdom, that means that there's a fight going on. In other words, Jesus saying, why would it be hard for a rich man to go to heaven, Maurice? Because when people get money, they, they, they get prideful. People get money, they forget where they came from. People get money now, you think you better than everybody because you don't got a little coins now. Now you don't got a little coins now, you feel like you can treat me from any kind of way because it seems like you got more money than me. And that's why he said because they're pride. The way that they look at themselves, they'll act like now. He didn't lose that hood, now you don't move somewhere else. Now you don't forget you looking down with everybody but you said it when you was in the hood. Well, what about when you was in the project? Now you ain't in the project no more. Now you act like you better than everybody. Right, right. So Jesus is trying to let you know that when you get money, you got to make sure that you don't go back to the kingdom 
Jesus said in his word, he said it would be more difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said, and again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to come through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go into the kingdom of heaven. When the disciples heard this, they were all puzzled and astonished and bewildered, saying, who then can be saved from eternal death? But Jesus looked at them and said, with men, this is impossible. But all things are possible with who? God. With God. Yeah. How can a camel yeah. go through the, a needle? <laughs> Y'all ever seen a little needle? <laughs> How can a, a camel go through a needle? Can anybody tell? She said it's impossible. But it's possible. You know how? In the spirit, it can. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the spirit. <laughs> let me tell them I said. Since I have gotten in the 40s and it, I have started putting on these dogs no glass. Because some stuff it seemed like I, had to, I couldn't see. But when I put on the glass, it made things appear bigger. But when I get in the spirit, Angie, I can make the eye of a needle enlarge itself. That'll tell us that I can walk through. Come on here. Because when you serve in the God of the possible, come on here. He can magnify, say magnification. He can remind me when my mother was alive. She'll be reading the Bible, Stephanie, and she'll have her Bible, have her glasses, have her magnifying glasses. I say, Mama, you got to do all that? She says, if I got to read it, I got to read it. It's it it like a hot mess. I said, that mama got on her glasses. She got on her magnifying glasses. And I said, help her, Jesus. <laughs> but she was showing me she wanted the word. And so God said, see, when, what happens when you put a magnifying glass to something? It get bigger. And God said, your imagination. Come on here. Say, I need to call on my imagination. Come on, I need you to show up. The children be playing a song, you say, I don't like that song. And then you get in your room, you sing that song that you don't like. Well, that's what happens when you hear things. That's what happens when you see things. So if you keep on saying, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. It'll get in your mind, and it'll begin to magnify you. And you'll begin to look at the very thing that says you're sick, and you say, no, I'm healed. I don't care what the doctor say, I'm healed. I don't care what you said, I'm delivered. I don't care what the Baptist said, I got more than enough. Huh? Because you got to magnify yourself. How do you magnify yourself by what you believe and what you say? That's why Jesus said it would be easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle because he went there in the spirit. That's why when you get your money, see, we've been saying, God, I need some money. All you got to do every time you take increase, you pay the tithes, and you say, God, I thank you for more than enough. You give it back to him. Whatever check, whatever you get, you got to give it back to the Lord and say, thank you that I got more than enough. And whatever you get ready to pay, I got more than enough. Even though it looks like it ain't more than enough, but you give it back to him. But when you give it back to him, put more than enough in your mind. So let's say that, you know, my bills is $5,000. All I got is $2,000. But when I thank him, said told you, I, in my mind, I see that the check is $5,000. I said, thank you, or either of you need to be 10. Thank you, Lord. I got more than enough and won't nothing get cut off. And you pay your bills and you believe that more than enough. What happened? Because in my mind, in the spirit realm, I had magnified to 10000 Oh, yeah. I left the 2000 and I went to 10000 in the spirit. So I said, God, I thank you because you're the God of more than enough. No. Now let me tell you, how do you know 
He the God of more than enough. You got to know when you're sowing into a place that he the God of more than enough. Y'all know what his name is? Jehovah Jireh. So when it looked like how many people in here how can we do all what we do when you know what you do? I'm going to say that again. You know what you give. You see, have you ever walked in here and the lights was off? Have you walked in here and it was stinky? Have you ever walked in here and it was torn to the floor? Have you ever seen us that we still be at a place that we give to other people? Yes. You've seen Jehovah Child. Yes, 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 no, yes. So if I'm sowing into a house, that God do more than enough. No. Yes. Even when some people leave, and he still say, Because see, when people think they leave, they not because I ain't paying my time. So I ain't paying my old friend. They ain't going to be able to make it without me. He said, but Jehovah, Jireh got to show up. Because I'm the God of the possible. So when you sow in this, you going to have more than enough. Yes. Oh, Lord, Jireh. Yes, God. Yes. Thank y'all. Keep it because y'all still looking at me crazy. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Because when you sow, okay, and when you sow apples, what's going to come up? Apples. So, when I'm sowing into a place that Jehovah Jireh will show up, what you think going to show up for you? Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. And he just waiting on you to call him. Uh, the God of the possible. Uh, show up for me. Uh, I'm sowing into this. Uh, show up for me. Uh,
spiritual place. Yes, God. So the first thing we got to do is repent. Why do we have to repent? We got to repent because you got to understand before God released the blessings, you got to understand we don't repent because we get caught. We repent because we're ready to change. We repent because we understand that it ain't about the person, but it's about God's kingdom. So it's about God's kingdom. See, if the enemy want to stop us from being from God from being the God of the possible, let me tell you what the devil want to do. The devil want to make you get into your feelings. The devil want to make you get into your emotions. A pastor on made me mad. A pastor on said that to me. A pastor on did that to me. He want to get you into your feelings, what you look like. And he want to get you to stay in the natural so that you can't shift with the person that God put in your life to shift you into your dimension of looking honey. So he want to get you stagnated to look from a one person perspective. You only look and do offense. You only look and do being mad. You got to understand. That's what the Bible said. When you got offense with your brother or your sister, what you going to do? You going to go to them and talk to them. Why? Because you don't want to let nothing stop you from shifting. Every time God put an apostolic person in your life, it's because God is trying to say, shift, shift, shift. Shift. It ain't right. I, I don't shift it enough. I'm staying right here. Uh-uh. Shift. 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 God want to shift you. And so the enemy will get you that you stop shifting because you're looking at your offense. You're looking at because I'm mad at them. You're looking at them because I don't like what they say. You're looking at them because they ain't doing what I want them to do. See, the enemy wants you to stay in that particular place. And so you got to repent because if God is going to show up for you spiritually, He can, you can't come before God unless you clean and unless you holy. See, holiness is still right. So let's turn your Bible to 2 uh, Corinthians 7. When you look at 2 Corinthians verse 7, repentance means change. Repentance means that I got to change before God because I understand that if God going to give me what I got to get, can I tell you, God don't expect for us to be perfect, but God expects for us to change. God expects for us to learn about Bible says, well, you know what he's supposed to do about it, right? right? And so when God convicts us and he reveals something that we're doing, it's because he's trying to shift you from darkness to light. Do this feel good? No, it don't. But God is saying, I'm trying to shift you because I got somewhere to take you, Angie. I can't take you if you're still in darkness. I can't give you the blessing if you're still in darkness. So God will have an apostolic person to reveal to you an area of darkness in your life because they God trying to get something to me. See, the enemy want to have us mad at the preacher not understanding God is trying to get something to you. And if you get so offended, you're going to miss it. So let's look at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, verse 10. When you look at verse 10, it says, For a godly grief and the pain is permitted to direct, to produce a repentance that leads and contributes to salvation. Every time you see the word salvation, salvation means deliverance. It means that God is trying to take you out of a place of darkness to light. So when you repent, you're telling God, move me from out of darkness into light. So it says here, so it's a repentance that leads and contributes to salvation and deliverance from evil. I'm reading it out of the uh, Amplified. And it never brings regret, but worldly grief, the hopeless sorrow that is characteristic of this pagan world is deadly in its breathing and is ending in death. I'm going to read it to you in a New American. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of this world produces death. So when you start repenting, because if you want to see the God of the possible, this is where you got to turn the magnified glass edge on yourself. This is where you got to say, God, stuff that I said in my mind about people, stuff that I said in my mind about my husband, about my wife, about my children, about my mom, about my daddy, even I said about the president. Other well, stuff that I say, God forgive me. Forgive stuff I said about the pastor. Because you know what you got? The reason why we got to do this because when we spoke negative words, Angel made me sick. I can't stand Angel. What I don't realize that I did was I have put Angel in a cage. And so now 
God can't really grow Angie because I have spoken something out of my mouth that was negative. And so now I can God can't do what he needs to do because instead of me using my mouth to create good, I use my words to create bad. Right. So the God of the possible can't show up for me because I have I have uh, 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 I have turned on him. How did I turn on him? Because I spoke death over another person. Because see, when we're in the kingdom of God, you my sister, you my sister, you my brother, you my brother, you my brother. Whether or not I like you or not, you my brother, you my sister. And so you got to understand and do the run. And then we read that in Bible study, earth and heaven is a witness against who? You. So the, it, the earth heard me saying, I can't stand it. The earth heard me say that I hope she don't go no further than what she is. So now the earth went and told God on me. And so here it is, I'm coming to God because I need to pray through my finances. I need you to work it out for me. And Satan said, you can't do that for her. She don't put her sister in a cage. So the God of the apostle can't show up for me until I first repent to what I said about her. Can I tell you, this is even when you say stuff about your children. Oh baby, Holy Spirit got me real good. You know them children will make you say some stuff? And you will be like, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. And I was repenting. And he said, I can't do nothing because you won't say this. I said, oh, God, help me, Jesus. I repent for when I said this. I repent for when I said that. I repent for when I thought about this. Oh, God, wash them and cover with your blood. Even I had to go back on stuff I said about people when I was mad. I said, God, I, cl- I repent for when I said, wash them in your blood. God, when I brought curses on other people's lives, when I stopped you from being God in their life because I spoke stuff over them, God, I need you to wash them. God, I need you to cover them with your blood. God, remove this murdering spirit off of me. Even when I thought bad about my own self, I can't do this. I ain't good enough. I ain't smart enough. Oh, God, forgive me because I curse your creation. Because God said we were good. But if I say I ain't smart enough, what did I just do? I just curse what God said do. So I have to say, God, forgive me because I curse you. I curse your creation. I curse myself. I brought stuff on myself that shouldn't be on me. And so I understand that the God of the possible, he can't work out miracles for us because our words have locked people in cages. And y'all remember how we get so caught up in politics. We got to go back from talking like these folks. And we don't say, man, they ain't that. They gonna run up to hell. They ain't that, but the devil them say, Lord, forgive me for speaking over these politicians. Forgive me for speaking over my boss. Forgive me. You got over speaking over the pastor. Oh, God, forgive me. Stuff I don't say it in my mind. Stuff that I don't say it in my heart. God, I ask you to watch me. Remove these curses and indictments. What is an indictment? It's a charge. That you don't follow in your own life. Children. The Bible says, obey your parents for it is right to do. Or you will die early. Do you not know it's not talking about a physical death? It's going to be a spiritual death. So you got an issue with your parents. So guess what? You got to say, God, forgive me for what I said about my parents. Because guess what? You'll be death in your finances, death in sickness, death that you can't go no further. Because you have put an indictment, a charge on your life by what you said. I may not like what mama did, but God pray for her because she needs help. She needs deliverance in her mind. Deliver daddy because daddy needs deliverance in his mind. Forgive me when I say they don't know what they're doing. Forgive me for saying, oh, Father, that you know what? They ain't nothing. They ain't my mama. They ain't my daddy. Forgive me when I said I won't listen to them. See, those are charges. You got to cover that stuff in the blood of Jesus, and you got to repent. Because if God is going to bring miracles in your life, you got to do the work to clean up your life. See, it's my job as an apostle to tell you what to do. And when you make the necessary changes, you're going to begin to see, whoa, the blessings going to start coming. Because you're going to open up your mouth and you're going to start cleaning your atmosphere. Even when you don't been in your house and all you did was cuss and complain, y'all better go in them apartments. I repent for cussing in here. I repent for fussing in here. I repent for mom and complaining. Oh, I'll catch you out right now. Let me open up the door. In the name of Jesus, you got to get up out of here. Because I washed the house and I covered it in the blood. I covered it in the blood. Y'all got to understand, you got to cleanse in the spirit. Because I told you, we're in a spiritual place now. Even though things look the same, but we're not in the same. You got to clean it up. And the more you clean it up, the more you're going to 
gonna begin to see. So just like how y'all been seeing them demons in there, you gonna all of a sudden see angels in there. You gonna walk in the kitchen and you know all the lights off, and you gonna say, "What that light is up in there?" And next thing you know, you're going to be in the hallway. Oh, God, Lord. You're going to begin to have encounters in your house because you're going to cleanse your atmosphere. And you're going to see the angelic spirits going to be in there. You're going to be sleeping. You're going to feel somebody touching you. And you know nobody ain't in there. You're going to have heavenly visitations because you have entered into a spiritual place. Because now God said, now I see this house is a place of blessing instead of a place of cursing. Doesn't make sense now. This is when you gotta clean your car. Y'all know y'all been cussing and everything in your car. I ain't got this. I ain't got this. I ain't got this. You gotta repent for saying I ain't got. I ain't got. I ain't got. I repent for saying that I got everything that I need. Everything that I need is already supplied, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful. If I got two dollars left on my check, I'm thankful. Because I lift it up now, God. I thank you that I got two thousand. I thank you that I got two thousand. Money is coming to me. Money comes from the north, south, east, and west. I don't know how he gonna. But God, I say, thank you, Jesus. Because you know that you have entered to this, this spiritual place, Angie. Things are going to manifest because God, God now know you know that you're in a new place. Did y'all hear it? Yes. God know that you know now. See, it's a different thing when a pastor take you there. But when God show you, and you know, you in a new place. That's a whole different place now. Mm-hmm. Because now you looking in there, you say, oh, don't walk in my room, take your shoes off, we're on holy ground. <laughs> Girl, what you talking about? Everything looks like, oh, take your shoes off, we're on the holy ground now. <laughs> Jehovah's in here, shh, don't you talk loud in here. We're in a holy place. Because now he knows where the invisible hell came in and took your physical. Right. 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 Do you not know God again? I was reading my miracles, and one lady was saying that God turned around and paid her house off. She was praying about miracles. Instead of people seeing her, her deed. Because she's seen in her mind, Angie, it's already paid. It's already paid. God, I thank you that it's already paid. You know what, Angie? I would have been like that lady. I ain't trying to figure out who paid. Baby, I got the title. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I ain't going to call nobody. I ain't going to say nothing. Hallelujah. Come on. That's right. Then well, you gotta enter into yes. this spiritual place. Yes. So y'all understand about repentance, right? Yes. So the next thing you know, you got to recognize your image. Turn your Bibles to Genesis 1. When you look at Genesis 1, you know, you know, we apostolic people, we love the book of Genesis. So when you look at Genesis 1, y'all know what I'm saying. Genesis 1, we talking about you got to recognize your image. What image are you coming after? When you look at Genesis 1 and 26, and God said, because I told you God don't have no mouth. God don't have an ear. God is a spirit. So God thought, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have, uh, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fire of the air and over all the cattle over the earth and over every creeping thing that creep on the earth. Verse 27, And God created man in his own image and his likeness. God created him, male and female, he created them. I'm going to stop right there. Why do what is an image? Write this down, Lord and Sheila. An image is a mental picture. A mental picture in my mind. So when God said he created us, he blew his breath into us, that means he said we're supposed to see things just like him. So in other words, Steph, we're supposed to be like the lady on coming to America. What you like, whatever you like. I know what I like, but what you like, whatever you like. God say, I don't care what the devil say, but how do I see your situation. I don't see that you sick. I see that you heal. I don't see that you broke. I see that you got money. I don't see that you bound up in, in demonic spirits. I see that you deliver. I don't see that you in chaos. I see that you in peace. You got to have that mental picture about yourself. But the enemy will cause your situation to look jacked up because he wants you to believe what you see. So this is where we've been, this is where we got to repent of it. 
Because we have agreed with what we see. We have agreed with being poor. We have agreed with, I ain't good enough. We agree, I can't make it. We agree that it's too much. We agree, we've been agreeing with what we see, and we've been coming to God's house with another man image. Oh, that'll preach right there. And I don't worry what you're doing. You married, but you're bringing another man baby in your home house. That's what we've been doing. Living up holy hand. God, I love you. God, I worship you. But you're looking at your situation from the image of the neighbor. You got to understand it's a fight for the image. The devil wants you to have his image, and God wants you to have his image. The devil wants you to image what you see. The devil wants you to image what you see with your natural eyes. The devil wants you to image what you feel with your feelings. The devil wants you to image what you see in your emotion. And God say, I ain't going by your emotion. I ain't going by your feelings. I ain't going by what you look like. He's saying, I'm going by my word. Because you got to understand, what is this uncomfortable sanctuary? Because God's trying to take you back to Remember when I searched had Jalen and I had my quavers up there? God's trying to take you to go back to how he created you to be. But we keep going back to Egypt. We keep going back with, 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 with what I say. He said, but that ain't how I made you. I made you because when God brought, when God blew into Adam, everything that he put before Adam, Adam said how God said it. Right? So if you're a child of God, why do we see our problems the way the devil sees it? See, why do we see it that we defeat it? Why do we see it that we can't help it? Because see, we're looking at our situation because you say, man, I got more demons. That's what I said when I forgot I needed to deliver. I said, man, I got more demons. I don't know where. You tell me, fuck, I got to renounce and deny all this stuff. Whatever you want me to live by. I said, God, this is some hot mess here. He said, but I came for the people that were sick like you. And that gave me comfort. That took off the shame for me. Because I understood that he wasn't coming to judge me. He was coming to deliver me. It ain't what I had to pretend and that I was holy. He said, I will make you clean once you confess it. Come on, y'all. He said, when you look at yourself and you see yourself as holy, that self means I'm the biggest whore. But when I confess Christ, now I become righteous. So now I look at myself as being righteous. You may look at me as a whore, but he don't see me as a whore. He sees me as being holy. And so I can't worry about how you see me. I got to see myself the way he sees me. So now you talk about me that I'm broke, but he said that I'm wealthy. So I got to say that I'm wealthy and not let you get into my ear. I'm not going to talk to you because you're telling me that I'm broke. Provide a new life for me. I got to be around new people that's going to help me to live in this new image. Right, right, right. Even though everything in my life still looks the same, I need y'all to get this. Because when you enter into this new place, I got to be around Angie, your people who call me a whore. I got to be around the people that call me a prostitute. You know what? Because that's how they're going to be able to see God on the inside of me. I got to be around them people that said that I was broke. Because if I keep saying that wealth and riches is in my house, God is blessing my business. God is calling me to prosper. Even though they see me doing what I'm doing, they're going to eventually see me walk in the promises of what I've been speaking because I've been creating a new image by my word. So God is going to have you being around the people that saw you from your old life. They got to. Because that's the only way they're going to be able to see that the true and living God is God. Do y'all hear me? So this is why we ain't got to be ashamed that I used to hook. I ain't got to be ashamed that I used to sell drugs. I ain't got to be ashamed because you got to be able to see me that when he blow me up, when he starts flexing me, you got to 
Tell me when we yes. enter to the spiritual place. Yes. Cause see, Mr. Yes. Stephan, it ain't gonna feel good. Cause I'm here talking about me. I'm gonna hit him when I remember I remember I slept with her. I slept with her. I had her. I, you got to hear all of that. You know what? Because baby, that's gonna give you the anointing that you're gonna be able to help other prostitutes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on here, honey. You got to be able to say, I used to have to pay her rent. She'd sleep with me and sleep with somebody else. You got to be able to take it like a woman. You got to be able to have it because now I understand that God is killing you. He's killing you so that when you get ready to talk to that other woman that did what you used to do and what God they tell God to deliver you from, He's going to be able to deliver her in 30 seconds. still got to be faithful when you're being talked about. You still got to be faithful when people telling you. It, it just don't find me, Mr. Stephanie. The people tell me, I, people want to claim and I cause the anointing on my life. But I remember, Angie, when I was sitting down in the seat, <laughs> that they, they would have women's fellowships and wouldn't tell me. They would go and talk about me. <laughs> oh, look how she dressed. <laughs> oh, look at her. Ain't nothing to her. <laughs> she ain't nothing. <laughs> you can talk about me like a dog. <laughs> Talk about my husband. You can talk about me. And God said, You keep on serving. You keep on being obedient. You do what I told you to do. He said, I'm going to raise you up. Come on here. I had to stay right there with the people that were talking about me. The people that were scandalizing my name. When they tried to set me up, God said, You keep being faithful. When they call it, they put roots and witchcraft on it. God said, You keep on being obedient. Right. So if the battle's over, I ain't even gonna press you. 
The bitch is doing stuff. <laughs> Baby, I don't even see you. <laughs> Lord, look, you're going to have like that little chat. She said, Mr. Stephen said they built them. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, God bless that little whore. <laughs> bless that little whore. Listen, they trying to throw stuff in the round, but it's God bless that little whore. them no more, because I have moved. Have you moved? Have you moved from that place of poverty? Have you moved to that place of healing? Have you moved to that place of deliverance? You got to move first in your mind, and you got to know how to stay there. I don't care what may come or may, what may go. You know, when that boat get the rolling in that water, but that anchor gonna keep it steady. Yeah. Come on here. Yeah. The boat may move, but that anchor got it in the in, in the shore of the ocean. It ain't gonna move. Them some big anchors, y'all know what I'm saying? Them some big anchors that it keep that ship from moving. You gotta put the anchor of your faith, throw the anchor of your faith in the spirit realm and say, I won't move. I won't move. Say, I will not go back. Say, I closed the door to 2023. All the warfare, all the evil, everything that I went through, I closed it up. I entered into the new. The doors of faith. I entered into you. Why do we got to enter to the doors of faith? Because faith is the word of God. So you got to enter into that place that when you start speaking, your words start manifesting. Don't y'all get got into that place. So when she say all my needs are being met, the words are being formed. The more she prays, the more the words are being formed to get her what she needs. And you got to keep saying it because you're in a new place. And if you mess up and say something, be quick to repent. Forgive me, God, for saying I ain't got enough. Forgive me for saying this is too much. Forgive me for saying ugly thoughts about people in my mind. Because you understand that God sees you. And that the earth and heaven going to tell on you if you don't repent. And so we just believe in God. And this week, say this week. This week. I'm seeing blessings. Yes, Malfix. I'm seeing blessings. Malfix. Because of the God of the possible. It's manifesting for me. Let's give the Lord a hand up for praise. Hallelujah.